of decorations can create the prettiest of cakes and there's nothing prettier than adding a bow. So in this week's video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can create this giant bow to add onto your tiered cakes. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, I've got my gum paste, or in this case, I'm using the Squires floral paste. Now I'm gonna be using around 130 grams in total, but I've actually combined 90 grams of my gum paste. And I started with a cream, but you can also use white. And I mixed in 40 grams of just regular fondant. Now the reason for doing this is it's just gonna make it a little bit more workable, especially for the larger pieces that we need to create. So I've just mixed those two together and colored it in this really pretty pink using the color splash raspberry. And I've got this wrapped in cling film to stop it drying out. I've also got a sandwich bag or if you've got an airtight container to keep it in whilst I'm working on my bow. I've then got some edible glue and some corn flour if I find it sticking. I've got my craft knife and a paintbrush. I've got a pizza cutter for cutting out my sections or you could just use your craft knife. I've got a small rolling pin and my ruler. And lastly, I've got some tissue. I'm gonna be using just normal tissue rather than kitchen paper as this is actually quite a lot softer. You could also use cotton wool. I'm gonna be creating my bow to add onto my two tier cake. Now my cake has a five inch tier on the top and a seven inch tier on the bottom and for this I'm just using a dummy cake. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is start on the main part of my bow and the reason for starting here is I want this to have the longest amount of time to dry. So I'm going to take some of my gum paste. Now gum paste does dry out so quickly so with the rest of that I'm just going to wrap it up and pop it into my sandwich bag. Now with my bow I'm going to roll out each of the sections separately with smaller amounts of gum paste. This will allow me to roll that gum paste out a lot thinner because we're working with smaller pieces. It will also stop that gum paste drying out too quickly. So I'm just flipping that gum paste over each time just releasing it from my work surface to stop that sticking. If you do find that your gum paste is sticking, you can pop down a small amount of corn flour. Now, the advantages of using gum paste is it is really stretchy, so it allows you to roll it out so much thinner, and it's gonna be like working with a fabric. It also sets completely solid, so that bow is gonna hold its shape on the side of your cake. Now, once your gum paste has been rolled out to around a millimeter, you can see that it starts to resemble fabric. So I'm gonna cut out the first part of my bow. So this is gonna be a rectangle, which is eight centimeters by 18 centimeters. Now to make our bow look realistic and look like it's come from the same piece of ribbon, I'm gonna be using widths of eight centimeters for each part. So I'm gonna flip that over and apply some edible glue down one end. So just a thin strip, I'm then gonna take my tissue, fluff this up and place this in the center of my gum paste. And this is gonna help your bow keep its shape. You then wanna pull that part over and just glue that down so the two sides meet. Picking it up, I'm gonna take the two corners and just pull them into the center, just bring them into a point. Now, this doesn't have much movement at the moment, so I'm gonna go in, just pulling that tissue around, just really bring in some shape in there. So once you're happy with that, I'm gonna leave that to one side and I'm gonna make one for the other side in exactly the same way. So again, taking a small piece of my gum paste and I'm gonna roll that out as thin as I can get it. Again, I'm gonna cut out a rectangle which is eight centimeters wide by 18 centimeters in length. Now I'm making this to fit against my five inch tier, but if you did have a bigger cake, you could make this bow any size you like. So we're just trying to create that kind of ruched effect where all of that ribbon has come together as we've tied the bow. So if I bring back in my other piece, we have the start of our bow. Now I'm gonna take a small amount of edible glue 
and just stick those two together. Now I'm gonna leave this part of my bow for a few hours just to firm up slightly so that when we start to add it onto our cake, it's gonna hold its shape. Whilst that's drying, I'm gonna work on the piece of ribbon that will wrap around my cake. So I'm gonna take a small little tape measure or you can use a ruler or a piece of string and I'm just gonna measure around my top tier. So it's around 44 centimeters. So for that larger strip, I'm taking around 70 grams of my gum paste and I'm gonna start to roll that out. Now, larger panels can be a little bit more difficult to get really thin. I keep lifting it from my surface and just working from the center out in both directions, just creating a really long strip. Once you're happy with the thickness, I'm gonna start to cut out my strip. Now, I know that the circumference of my cake is 44 centimeters, but I want a little bit extra to play with so that I can pull it into a point. So I'm gonna cut it out around 48 centimeters. Now, when it goes on the cake, I want it to wrap around the side and look like we've pulled it tight in order to tie that bow. So I want to gather each of my ends. To do this, I'm just gonna fold it backwards and forwards going back so that when we pull it down, we get this ruched effect. I want the bottom of my ribbon to, to stay straight. And I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Now I'm gonna start by adding on some edible glue just around the side. And where I want them to meet, I'm just gonna have that at the bottom. I'm then gonna carefully lift up my ribbon and just bring this around the cake, keeping the bottom against the bottom of my cake and just put in those two pieces so that they meet. Now I'm going to cut off any excess. So this is where our bow is going to sit. Now I'm going to push my finger in and just make sure it's flat against the cake which is going to give us enough space to add our bow. I can then go in and just pull at the sides. The next thing to do is create the two tails that are gonna go on the front. So I'm gonna start with the first one and I've rolled out a piece of gum paste and cut it out eight centimeters by 20 centimeters. When you tie a bow, I don't know about you, but I always cut the bottom of my bow at an angle. So I'm gonna start with this one and I'm just gonna cut it. If you've ever looked really closely when you tie a bow, one of the tails is gonna come from behind the main bow and the other one is gonna Look like it comes from the front. So what I'm going to do with this one is first of all I want to gather it as I did with the other pieces so that it comes into a point. All those points are then going to join up together on the cake. You can then add some edible glue just to keep that all together. This one is gonna come from the left hand side and is gonna come from behind my bow. So I'm gonna add some edible glue, stick that down. You can add movement into that ribbon where it hits your board. Now I've chosen to make this one 20 centimeters, which is just gonna bring it down onto my cake board, but you can make them any length that you like. If you wanted them longer, you could have a larger cake board and have them running along the bottom. And you wanna add some glue behind that just to stick it in place. So I'm just making sure that I'm keeping it to the left hand side of that join. So I've then got another piece which is eight centimeters by 20 centimeters for the tail on the other side and a piece which is eight centimeters by around seven centimeters and this is going to be the middle of my bow. Now you're also going to need to bring in your bow. The first thing I'm going to do is just create the tail for the other side and do exactly the same and I'm gonna squish this one down so it's quite flat. So I'm gonna take my smaller square and I want this to look like a knot. So I'm gonna fold in my first edge just to give me a neat finish. I'm then gonna go backwards and forwards on myself once. Also turn that end in. I'm then gonna pull this around slightly just to give it some shape. Pinch those two ends together. Flip this over and just push down the points. I'm then gonna use some edible glue. Lift my bow and just push this onto that glue. Position that tail on the front. 
Now you could lay this one directly next to you, the one that we've already added to the cake and then add the bow on top. But if you do tie a bow, usually this one will come out of the center of the knot. And I want to pull this over so that I cover all of these joins. And that's gonna tuck behind. And you can use the end of your paintbrush or your dressing tool just to add a little bit of movement into that knot. We then wanna add this onto our cake before our tail starts to dry as we don't want it to crack. So I'm gonna add some edible glue onto where our bow is going, or if you prefer, you can use some royal icing. I can then very carefully lift my bow up with that tail and I'm gonna push that into place. Now I'm then gonna remove that tissue paper. So the first thing we want to do is start securing it in place. So I'm gonna put a little bit of edible glue behind my bow and also on that tail that's coming down. This is gonna take any pressure off of where they're all joined together. You can then move it around, just bringing it into the shape that you want. And just think about how if it was a real ribbon, it would fall and drape down your cake. So here we have this finished two-tier cake with this giant pink bow on the side. Now, don't forget, you can make this bow in any color and in any size to match the theme of your cake. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and will be able to use it to make your own gum paste bows. If you have enjoyed the video, as always, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already, then don't forget to subscribe to the Case for Lynn's YouTube channel. You can also hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button and this will just alert you every time I upload a new video. So, until next time, bye!